Sakina Yaqubi from Afghanistan, again along the same lines in three, four minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Lina. Um, first of all, I would like to congratulate all of us again for such a wonderful identity that we are, are hoping that it will really help every one of us, especially the voice of the women who are unreachable. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am from Afghanistan, and I would like to um, just um, very briefly, um, in the behalf of the women of Afghanistan, present to you that the challenges that the women of Afghanistan are facing to request their rights and to go and be able to, who they are, be able to function as who they are. For example, in Afghanistan, all of you are aware of it, that there is violence against women, there is lack of education, there is a lack of economic empowerment, there is a lack of um, health service for the women of Afghanistan. These are the challenge that they are facing. But this challenge that they are facing, it makes it worse in one specific, specific issue, that is security. Security is the major, major challenge that the women of Afghanistan are facing. As you all know, there are women organization, there is national organization, there are women grassroots. We are working on our challenges and we try to really boost up this problem. But the one thing that is really stopping us, security. And security is something that, for example, in a village, a woman wants to go against all the odds which is against her her family, her husband, her, her culture, her tradition, coming to a center to learn. But what is stop her? Security. Because somebody else pick her up from the street, somebody is kidnapping her, somebody is threatening her. So as a result, although she come with the challenge of trying to face whatever is in the house or outside her in, in the community, but then something is from outside stop her. This is one thing that really the women of Afghanistan are facing day to day, and it's very very big issue. So what's our hope from the women of the UN? We, as a, as a woman of Afghanistan, we are hoping that they will be a voice for the women of Afghanistan and matter of security to raise the issue in the national level, in the country, or in the United Nations, to stand behind us that we have a peaceful and secure life. We, we are asking the women of you in that, and that's that's I am going to talk about, because really, if security is provided, all the other challenge will be overcome, because they are a strong women. We have done many, many through education. Our society is not educated, but we work on the issue of education to overcome all the other issue. But the main thing, to get to the political participation, to get to human rights, to get to all other issues, we need security. So we are asking for that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We move to India with our colleague Malika. Uh, good morning, Madam Bachelet and my sisters, and thank you for this opportunity to speak with you this morning. You know, we are at such a moment of crisis and opportunity. The Jasmine Revolution is taking place around us, led by young women and men from countries where we never imagined such leadership would emerge. We are surrounded by the rubble of the fiscal, financial meltdown and crisis, conflict, climate change. As women, we know the list. It is endless. The work ahead of us is enormous. We know that as well. But you and women, under your leadership, provides us with a moment of hope and opportunity. And I would like to focus more on what our dreams and hopes are, Madam Bachelet, for what that transformative moment can be for us. I don't want to talk about specific issues that we need to put before you because there are so many. I believe that for many of us who have been working in this movement for the last many years, your position at UN Women provides us with an opportunity to make a turning point, a tipping point, if you will, where women can be taken seriously at the political level, where we are not just at the table, but where we are transforming the shape and the form of the table. It is, 
we are at a point where we know that the policies and practices of the past under the leadership of men have been an abject failure. So it is not enough for us to simply keep adding women to failed policies. And we hope that with your experience and your leadership and everything that you have learned in your role as president, in civil society, as a doctor, that you are able to catalyze the power of the women's movement, bring all of our voices and resources to the table in redefining that table. As leader of an organization, which is Breakthrough, uh, we work in India to demand women's rights. We have been running a campaign called Bel Bajau, calling on men and boys to take a stand. We use popular culture, media, community mobilization as our tools, and we put them forward in service of this political transformation that we hope you will lead. As I know, all of us in our different positions around the world are saying to you at this moment, we need you to be a political voice, a tipping point, a turning point, not just for the women of the world, but for all humanity. Thank you. Thank you, Malika. And our last panelist, Cindy Medar Gould from Baobab in Nigeria. Um, the women of Africa join voices with the women around the world in saying congratulations for this entity that has come into being, that came in through our sweat, our tears, and in some instances, our blood. And so we are very grateful. Okay, can you hear me now? Okay, sorry. Uh, I've just wasted 30 seconds, sorry. Um, <laughs> the women of Africa join their voices with other women around the world in congratulating us on the coming into being of this entity that we fought for with our sweat, our tears, and in instances, our blood. And we are very happy, madam, that you sit at the head of this unit. Of this unit. I was very, uh, um, very happy to hear what you have outlined. Unfortunately, or fortunately, Everything that I have on my uh, on my uh, paper to talk about, you have already addressed. So therefore, we will be looking at how we can help you to do the work that we are really asking that you lead us in doing. In Nigeria, we are one of the things about Africa in, on the whole is that. We sign documents, we sign them all, but there is no implementation. And sometimes we in the women's movement feel that this is a deliberate political strategy to sign knowing that we cannot implement because of articles in our constitutions. And so we, um, the women of Africa have taken up the baton and we try to let the generality of women know what these things are that these men sign and then they don't even tell us that they have signed them. You know, we wake up one day and we're here in CEDO. CEDO, women are advocating for implementation of CEDO. Most people don't know what CEDO is. Um, and so we look to, to, to your leadership to help to bring in the true meaning of gender mainstreaming. What the feminist movement meant by gender mainstreaming is not what the men of Africa know or interpret gender mainstreaming to be. So we're looking to, to you and to this entity to help us to bring in feminist uh, interpretation or reinterpretation of what is meant by these um, resolutions and these conventions that they sign. And we are looking to help you in any way we can to push the envelope forward. 
and to push it in an open, transparent, and inclusive manner. And in that uh, instance, we are ready to stand with you shoulder to shoulder to make things happen on our continent. Thank you very much. Thank you. First of all, thank you to all the panelists for summarizing your ideas and your passion in just a few minutes. This is unprecedented. Um, 